Today we're doing the site setup guide for the Eldis Avanti 566 2012. We're going to start on the near side where we've got the battery and 230 hookup compartment. So our 230 electrics plug in here and we've got room for our battery on this side here. We've also got the little key switch for the motor mover which will run through when you collect the caravan. That's just up here. We have also got an external 240 socket in the back there as well. So uh, if you're running power into the awning you can plug into there and again run the cable through here and give you power into the awning. Moving to the front of the caravan, we've got our gas bottle or our gas locker box. We've got room for two gas bottles. Uh, again, we've got the strap here that will need to go around the gas bottle and secure that into position. Set up for propane gas. So we've got the pigtail on there and we've got the, the hand wheel connector. This you can just do up by hand so you've got no spanners required and it's just do it up hand tight and then turn the gas on the bottle we have got a little isolator switch on the regulator itself um, which is more of a service shut off so for normal use that can stay on and you just turn your gas bottle on and off here the Elvis Avanti is fitted with the IDC control light here which is the electronic braking system BPW fit on their chassis. Uh, we've got the 13 pin electric, so if your car is fitted with 13 pin electrics, this will just plug straight in. Now, if you've got two seven pin connectors, we do need a converter that goes from two seven pins to a 13 pin on here. Again, we've got the Winterhof hitch, which is a little bit more complex on hitching up. These are slightly different to the Alco hitch. It still works as a stabilized hitch, but this just catches a few people out. Actually, more the unhitching than the hitching. So we're gonna use our little tow ball um, that will be the same as what you'd have on your car. So that is just basically, if you dropped it onto your car, that is the position that we've been to now. Literally, uh, it's We've got a little indicator here that pops up just to say that that's connected in and then the blue handle pushes down and for hitching up that is pretty much it so when you drop it onto the car you'll get the little indicator pop out the handle will move slightly forwards and you'll be able to push it down we have got another little indicator just on the top here then which we're lined up into the OK. If this was into the red, it would mean that we've got an issue. Um, so again, it's just unhitch then, go back through the motions and just make sure that we go into the green on the OK. Now, where people struggle with this hitch is actually more the unhitching side. Um, so what we're gonna do is obviously we're hitched up now and we're gonna come to unhitch. We lift the handle up and where people struggle with this hitch is that if we just push this forwards now the little side pegs here won't clear the uh, the little frame on the on the side of the hitch and what we actually have to do is on this handle you can see here we've got a little bit of movement where we can pull it actually sort of uh, at a 45 degree angle and up to the sky and that will actually then move the little parts here just past and allow the hitch to come fully back now where people tend to have trouble is that if you put too much weight on the on the jockey wheel and pulled against the car you won't be able to use that movement there so that hitch probably won't won't move past that that point there so what we need to do is just make sure first of all that we've not got any weight on the on the jockey wheel we'll lift the handle up into the position that we are then and then 
will pull this up you can see the movement there we've come at that 45 degree angle past lift the handle right fully forwards and you can see that the toe ball then just pops out really easily and we've come right past so again it's just it's just making sure that you get that movement correct you can then if it was on the car you can then lift it up on a jockey wheel and that will come off without any issues whatsoever um, again once we're in this position now it won't actually go back down so if you're going to put a hitch lock on um, you'll need a little ball that comes with a hitch lock which will go in you'll have to push that right up and if this was the ball now so if we just push that actually up good a good forceful movement into there to actually lock lock that in and um, so it does need a good a good clunk into position basically um, the handle will then find its way past and clear and we can put the hitch down then so again just one more time lift up the hitch up to the sky get our movement here at that angle and right forwards and you won't have any issues at all with the uh, the Winterhof hitch head as long as you do that correctly. So onto the near side we've got our gas and flue cover for our water heater. This has got the Truma water heater and our winter cover that's in place there. Now that just literally fingers underneath press with your thumb in the middle and that will pop straight off. This does have to come off when you're going to use the, the boiler. Um, you can get away with it on for electric but for gas this will not light up with this cover on uh, and you'll just get a build up of gas and all of a sudden it will it will make a bit of an explosion to be fair if you're trying to do it with this cover on so uh, best advice make sure that this winter cover is off whenever you're going to use the boiler. Water pump that will be inside of the sink uh, we literally drop it into our Acarol push into the side of the caravan it will only go in one way and then we've got a little catch on the lid that will lock that into position moving further down we have then got our waste water outlets so we've got two waste water outlets right below the cassette for the toilet so your waste water pipes will just curl down and a waste water container then just slid underneath the caravan and straight in. Got our cassette toilet um, and our flush water at the top so pink chemical and flush water into the top little watering can or a little um, pot bottle full of water and that will fill that up there's no indication to tell you when it's full it is literally when you can see water up the top here that it's full make sure that this is drained at least past halfway full if you're going to travel with it do not travel with it full you'll end up with water inside of the caravan set at the bottom we've got our little orange handle that lifts up and the cassette just pulls straight out so to empty the cassette we turn the funnel out remove the cap and we've got a little drain purge button at the back so we hold that in as we empty that out that will just let air in and just empty the tank out fully to fill this with blue chemical it's just a little tab on the side here it opens up blue chemical in and you can give that a swirl through also just make sure that this is fully closed off and this is in a straightforward position otherwise this won't come out when you come to remove it again make sure that the trap door on the cassette is fully closed before trying to remove the cassette otherwise that isn't going to come out either for winter we've got a drain off for the flush water um, literally pop the the cap off and that will drain out it will just naturally fall back in so any last little bits if you're going to let it completely drain out just a little margarine pot just underneath and that will catch any of the uh, the last little bits again just make sure that you put the bung back in and that will tuck straight up into position there 
Moving now inside of the caravan. We've got our awning light switch. Again, I'll show you that just in a second on the control panel. So moving inside of the caravan, we've got our main control panel just at the side of the door. Our master is our main 12 volt on and off, and you'll see up top, our little indicator just tells us what we've either got coming from the charger panel or from the battery itself, if we've not plugged into the, uh, the 230 volt. We've then got our water pump, our lights, and our awning light, which I popped on just when you were outside. Now, before we put our water pump on, we want to make sure that all of our taps are in the closed position, that our drain bung on the boiler is closed and ready to fill the system, and that uh, we're not going to have any water coming out anywhere that it shouldn't. We'll move underneath of the seating area and make sure that our drain bung is in the closed position. This is where you're going to drain the caravan off during the winter also. So to drain the caravan off, it's literally open the taps up and the little yellow drain bung that we've got down here. So we've got the little drain bung down here. Is literally in the up position like we're there is draining the caravan and then to fill the water system is back in the down position as we are there so again when we come to refill the system we want to make sure that that is in the down position as we are now it can be either to the front or to the back it doesn't matter it doesn't matter which way that is but also when we drain it off there's only one position and that's in that upright position as we've got there so again we're going to fill the system up now so we want to make sure that that's down we'll make sure all of our taps are in the off position and we can then go ahead and put our system on pop this up so we've made sure our shower and our bathroom tap are off. We're now confident that we can put our water pump on and it's just literally open our taps up. Now on the cold side, it will come through pretty much straight away. On the hot side, if we've had the, drain, the system drained down, we're gonna get a bit of coughing and spluttering as we did start to there but we have we have got the system fairly full at the moment so we just need to wait for the water to be coming through constantly without any coughing and spluttering once we've got all the water coming through without any air in the system we're confident that our water heater is full of water and we can then put the system on uh, on our water heater on either gas or electric but again we just need to make sure that we've got all the air out of the system and again you can see it's still it's just purging very slightly there so we've still got a little bit of air in the system so just wait for that to go and then run that through there as well So once we've got a nice flow of water and again we want to make sure that that is the same on all of our taps so we've got a good flow of water on our bathroom taps and also on the shower once we've got the water through the system we can then go ahead and put our water heater on gas or electric so for our water heater, we've got two settings here. We've got on the left, our Truma Ultra Store, which is our water heater. We've got the 230 setting, and we've got a low setting and a high setting. So depending on what site that we go on to, whether they've got enough power to run it on the high setting. Uh, if not, we may have to run it on the, the lower setting. 
and then if we were wanting to use our water heater on gas we've got our right hand one then uh, unfortunately it doesn't say gas um, so again just always remember that the right hand setting through ultra store 50 or 70 uh, is is gas and we can then set that to whichever setting that we want it to if we do fail and we don't light up on the the gas we'll get a little red light as we have done there um, so once that's once that's actually lit up on the on the gas just make sure that we don't get the red light coming on again another way to tell that the boiler is working okay is if you put your hand over that flue vent on the outside you'll actually feel the heat coming out of that uh, that vent that we remove the cover off outside yeah So back on the 70 then. Yep. Um, if we pop it onto the higher setting on the electric and we'll let that water heat back up then. Now again, we had already run the, the gas through the system, um, but what we will normally do is run our hob system through first on the gas, and that will just make getting the, the gas through. Um, as you saw when we put it onto the 70, it, it actually didn't light up the very first time, uh, and that's just because of a little bit of air in the system. So if we're swapping a bottle, or we're just coming to the caravan for the first time, we've not used it, if we run our hob through first, whether we're using gas or not, um, this, this will just get the gas through the system. So if we do need to use any appliances on the gas, everything is just going to light up that a little bit quicker. Um, they are like a standard control dial. So to light them up, we push them in, turn it to the big flame setting and hit our igniter and they'll light up straight away same on our grill and again we've got a high and a low setting on there also and then same for our oven again we'll turn the control dial to the high setting hold it in hit our igniter and we'll get our flame we normally hold it in for all 10 15 seconds and that that then will stay lit that's now going to make sure that sort of all of our other equipment is going to work on gas an awful lot easier so if we move on to the fridge we've got a main on and off button just at the bottom with that one we'll get our little blue light and then it will come up set it to gas and we'll hear that ticking and then actually light up on the on the gas we can then control our temperature with the side button so we've got lower and higher we'll always run it on high just to make sure the fridges are working as, as they should do and then the other button over on this left hand side we can then toggle through put it onto electric we've got the plug setting and if we were running on the car battery when we're towing we've got our battery sign we have got a fault code here come up which is 10 which basically means that we've not got a car connected so as soon as we connect the car up and we have to start the engine on the car this fault code would clear and this would then run as a call box as you're traveling if you've got all of the 13 pins wired on your electrics on the car so again as i say first gas symbol second is the plug which is your 230 volt electric and then the battery is for when you're towing that will then normally take 
about an hour on this size of fridge and you'll start to feel that that cools down and again by us running the the hob uh getting the gas through on the hob first that will just light up an awful lot quicker on the on the gas system the electric will pretty much just work immediately so um, when we put that electric on it's it's just going to have the power straight to it on our fire if we now wanted to use this on gas our control dial over on the right hand side and our igniter so to actually light it up on the gas we'll turn our control dial to the 10 we'll hold this in and we'll hit our igniter four or five times leave it held in for a second and then we we'll release it you'll hear the fire roar up and you'll actually hear the the fire burning away we have got a little spy hole here that you can if you get right into the right angle which is sort of right up and looking down um, you will see the flame in there this will probably be just a bit more of an angle there you go so just through there we can see the flame through that spy hole you have got to be at a sort of diagonal angle straight down there turn that off we've got our blown air heating setting then which is on the left hand side of the fire so we've got a flag symbol which is just we can actually use that to blow just cool air around the caravan at any point so if it's really warm outside and we just want a bit of cool air blowing around we can set that and we can set the speed to where we want it in the middle is off and then our a that's going to work with our thermostat whether we're working on the electric heating or on the gas heating so once we set that thermostat that fan will just kick in and out with with the thermostat when the heating's coming out of the fire so you won't really hear any change by turning the dial on a as it will just work with the thermostat of the fire itself so if you want to use the fire on 230 volts we've got our truma ultra heat control dial just above our water settings and we've got trim ultra heat 230 volt we've got off we've got 2500 and a thousand a little bit like our water heating where we've got high and low settings again if we go to a site that's got a lower ampage power supply we may need to run it just on 500 watts we'll get a little green light whatever setting whether it's on 500 a thousand or 2000 a little green light will indicate that that is working correctly and our middle dial then is our thermostat so again that will control how warm that fire will get and how much heat the fire will put out as i say with the blown air heating that works on the 12 volt we can set the dial to a and then that will work in conjunction with either the 230 volt heating or the gas heating and that will just blow the warm air around the caravan from the duct and the vents that are fitted around the caravan all of our individual lights um, will have switches on um, on the individual little spotlights around the caravan we have then got a bank of light switches on the wall here which will do our mirror light our rear cupboard lights and also our bathroom light is controlled from this one if I just pop these all into the on position we've got all three bunk beds have got the lights on and then we've got spotlights around the rear dinette also Again, just on the back table we've got a socket for our 230 volts we've got a 12 volt socket like a cigarette lighter type and we've also got an aerial point there too there's plenty of storage throughout 
this bottom bed makes into a, another single bed so the table drops down and our back cushions go into the middle again you can turn these cushions over just to make those a little bit more comfy the bathroom area then we've got our cassette toilet and to use the flush we've got our blue button on the top and you can hear the the pump running there we've not got any water in in the system at the moment just so that that's all ready for you to travel when you collect the caravan but hopefully you can hear that pump running there our grey handle on the bottom this is going to open the the trap at the bottom or in the cassette toilet itself to let everything through and again as i said outside when we we're emptying the cassette or taking the cassette out we need to make sure this grey handle is right fully forwards if we come to remove that cassette and it's quite difficult to remove it doesn't seem like it wants to come out make sure that this is fully closed otherwise you are going to damage the system so always just once you've finished using the toilet just pull this back to the front of the caravan as far as it will go and that will stop any issues and make sure that's all working correctly again we've got plenty of storage cupboards within the bathroom we've got a little fly vent and a night vent in the bathroom that comes across and again our cover then just comes down and if we wanted to open up our vent in the bathroom that one just opens up also in the kitchen we've got our microwave so again we can adjust our power levels we've got different settings um, to cook it's just the middle dial uh, and then stop cancel and you've got different settings there we can adjust the time to what we want with the dial and just use it as so the microwave plate will remove that now we'll put this underneath the front cushion there so that's ready then for traveling again if that comes out as you're traveling especially if we've got the glass lid down here the chances are if this door was to come open it's going to smash the glass here so whenever you're traveling always make sure that that microwave plate is removed the front bed to make that up is literally pulls out it will come a little bit further over the stops right to the very end our back cushions then can either go into the middle or we can turn our center cushions over and to the turn the lumps to the outside and fill in with the, the back cushions into the middle for our electrics our main 230 volt control panel and fuses underneath this front seating here we've got a main trip switch that will tell us whether we've got power coming into the caravan and we've got a little test button there and then we've got our individual breakers for our individual items within the caravan our little 12 volt fuses so we've got our lights pump or auxiliary fire car alarm the fridge igniter and um, so all of our individual little fuses just there we have got a little switch just underneath the kitchen area as well for our kitchen lights which i'd missed earlier so that's just tucked away just underneath of there and then again all of our windows and roof lines i've got fly screens and blinds and again on all of the windows and blinds is the same in the front drawers is a pack of books for this caravan so all the pack of books are just in the in the front drawer so individual um manuals for all the individual items are just in the front there as well so that concludes our site setup guide for the Aldi Avanti 566 if there is anything that you'd like us to just run back through please let us know in the comments we can hopefully explain in a little bit more detail if there's anything else that you need to know hopefully we've covered everything that you need to know and hope you enjoy your new caravan and the first time going away on site and setting it up 
thanks are mark at the caravan place